Hello everyone here at OS Reviews, you're watching our retro review of the Nokia Booklet 3G. This was Nokia's first and only netbook slash laptop that was released in 2009 and features, again, pretty netbook-ish specs, inclusive of an Intel Atom processor clocked at 1.6GHz, 1GB of RAM, and a 160GB hard drive. What distinguished the Nokia booklet from other competitors, however, was a much longer battery life that lasted upwards of 12 hours thanks to the fact that it was a fanless design, something that we now take for granted on a lot of Chromebooks and Ultrabooks, and we think, well, these lightweight computers really shouldn't have fans in the first place, but that was certainly not the case, such as this one here, which has actually the same internal specs as the Nokia, is a lot thicker and also has more vents as well as fans, which uh, causes the battery life to be significantly shorter. Shorter. So Nokia actually worked very hard on the design, as always, to make this thing look extremely beautiful. I do think that after Nokia's kind of hardware team was acquired by Microsoft, they should have released kind of a follow-up to this, or even if they try something like that today, I would think that there would still be quite a bit of fanfare for a revival or a second generation version. The book at 3G was called 3G because it featured a SIM card slot to allow you to connect to the internet when Wi-Fi wasn't available. So let's take a closer look at the design of this pretty interesting netbook first. Uh, it's very compact, it's very sleek and elegant, and this is the charger that it came with, also very small. Here it is next to kind of a smartphone. It's compact, easy to take around, and has an extremely elegant design, just like most of Nokia's smartphones. In terms of the design language, it also came in multiple colors, from this black version to a blue version to even a white one, and it reminds me a lot of their phones that came out around the same time, such as this uh, Nokia uh, Lumia 800, also the Nokia N9, that has kind of this curved screen and a boxy shape. The booklet also has an extremely solid construction that at the time many compared to the Apple MacBook, and that's because the sides as well as the palm rests of the device are made out of a solid unibody aluminum that feels extremely hefty just like on Apple's computers. Again, this is a feature that was kind of rare back in 2009, which is more common in today's uh, manufacturing of Ultrabooks, but this really was an extremely hefty and well-crafted machine that seemed like a MacBook but shrunken down to the size of a 10-inch portable computer. On the right-hand side of the unit, we have access to one of the speakers. There's a secondary speaker on the other side for stereo sound. Again, the entire thing here is sandwiched between aluminum, so it feels extremely nicely built. There's also a dedicated power switch, a flap that covers up a full-size SD card and the SIM card slot, a USB 2.0 port, and the charging port. And on the left-hand spine, there's a full-sized HDMI port. Another unique feature for the time, because back then, many netbooks were still using VGA ports, but Nokia had already updated to the latest standard. Two more USB 2.0 ports for three ports in total, which is more than enough, actually more than many Ultrabooks today, and there's a 3.5mm headphone jack as well. And on the base, you can see that, again, the laptop is made entirely out of aluminum, and that premiumness also extends to the hinge, where Nokia, again, had a really great engineering team, so you can just lift up the entire thing using just one finger and it opens up. In terms of operating system, the Booklet 3G has Windows 7 on board, which runs decently, but even for its time, was never really a fast laptop, and that kind of was the problem, was although it had kind of this beautiful artistic design that was really premium, the internals were still that of a netbook or a UMPC. So, to improve on the performance, you can install something like Linux, for instance, Ubuntu or Mint Linux that can improve the speed since it's a more lightweight OS. And you can still do things like very light web browsing as well as word processing without too many issues. Taking a look at the design here, we have a 10.1 inch HD display, so it's 720p in terms of resolution, and it has kind of this edge to edge glass design that's completely flat, despite not being a touchscreen, but again, it was very futuristic design for almost 10 years ago. There's also a webcam on the very top that says Nokia Booklet 3G. The keyboard here is, of course, smaller than a full size layout on a regular laptop, but still quite comfortable thanks to the island spacing that Nokia is using. The keys themselves have great depth and travel, they're very tactile, responsive, and very easy to get used to. The only area where, for me, the book is starting to show its age would be its trackpad, which I consider to be kind of small, uh, especially here in 2018 where we have gotten used to much larger layouts, but it supports multi-touch for things like scrolling and pinching, and 
Again, you have an all aluminum design with the palm rest here, which feels very solid. In addition, the left and right click keys are also made out of aluminum. And compared to something like a Sony Vio Lifestyle Mini PC, the price was actually quite fair. There's also a carrier version with AT&T that you could pick up for about 300 for a two year service agreement if you wanted to use 3G when on the go. Display, as you can see here, seems to be doing a decent job and it seems like there's an update that it's trying to process, which we'll ignore for the moment being. It's not an IPS panel though, so if we flip down the display, even though it goes pretty far back, you can see how the viewing angles do tend to wash out a little bit more. And we are greeted into Windows. Aside from installing two alternative browsers, Internet Explorer is here by default. I haven't done anything in terms of other programs, so it's pretty clean right now. Simply because I wanted to use Chrome since it's the browser I typically use. It's best in terms of compatibility with web pages. It works best with watching YouTube videos. But unfortunately, since the booklet 3G has only one gig of RAM, it doesn't do the best job in the world just because Chrome is a pretty RAM intensive browser. It's not the best in terms of optimizing memory. And as a result, you often will you know get an error or the, the browser will crash. Internet Explorer is the most optimized browser out of the three because it's one that's built in by Microsoft. It doesn't use as much RAM as Chrome, and it seems to be pretty consistent when it comes to browsing pages like the New York Times. The only problem is Internet Explorer doesn't do a great job of watching back videos, and this version here was one that came with the booklet originally, so it's very outdated. We can see that it's loading up actually fairly quickly, it's not too many problems there. And I can also uh, scroll up and down using the trackpad here. The action is overall pretty smooth and responsive, so the multi-touch gestures actually work quite well with this trackpad. So overall, web browsing is passable on the Nokia Booklet 3G, even here in 2018, but if you're trying to watch videos like YouTube streaming, especially in HD quality, it's not going to fare very well. It's going to get a lot of buffering as well as choppiness in the video, and again, if you're using Chrome, the browser will likely crash. So you can view back videos if you have them stored directly to the hard drive, which since it has 160 gigs is still quite large. You can store offline media collection. You can perhaps watch videos in you know 360 or 480p without too many problems, but anything like HD quality video or Netflix streaming is not going to be good enough for this. So as reference, this is what Opera looks like. So the interface is again pretty clean. You have some default built-in shortcut tabs for things like eBay, Amazon, Bookings.com, Walmart, TripAdvisor, Facebook, and Opera also has some built-in security features as well as some ad block features that you can play around with. There's also a dock on the left-hand side, if you're not familiar, that gives you access to uh, Messenger as well as WhatsApp, always here on the side, which is pinned, in addition to a universal search on the side as well. So it's a pretty modern interface that works, uh, again, better in my opinion than Chrome on this particular model just because of the limited RAM but uh, it's about the same in terms of loading speeds as Internet Explorer uh, that's built on in as well. When it comes to battery life, I have to say that the booklet 3G is still quite strong. So that, right now we have 94% remaining and it's getting us around six hours and 40 minutes as the estimation, which is actually pretty accurate in my test run so far. So on a completely full charge, this thing will still last you about seven hours or so. Special commands include tapping on the power key once to bring up this taskbar that can allow me to go back and forth between balanced, high performance, and power saving modes. Here's what the media controls look like. You have to tap on function to access, uh, let's say, volume up. This is what that looks like. Volume down, as well as mute. And here's what the Nokia Social Hub application looks like. It allows us to actually create text messages and call people because the SIM card is inserted on the side here. So you can take a look at whether your bill is ready. You can actually create a new message here just by tapping on this key, entering the number and the message. So it's actually pretty nice because it's obviously e easier to type out a message on a full QWERTY keyboard. Tapping on function and F10 also brings in the wireless command manager and that's what it looks like to easily toggle between these commands and into airplane mode as well. Finally, in terms of system properties, as you can see here, uh, it's rated to be 2.2 for the Windows Experience Index, which really doesn't mean too much, but we can verify that it does have indeed a single core 1.6 gigahertz processor, which again, is kind of slow by today's standards. So here it is, a distribution of Limbuntu, which is a lighter version of Ubuntu that requires less resources to run. And this is pretty much what you're going to get as far as best performance is from a Linux distribution. And indeed, the performance does improve uh, 
significantly compared to the Windows 7 experience. It feels a lot more snappy, boot up times were faster as well, and now it takes about 15 seconds to power on from scratch. And we still have many of the same basic tools and programs that you'll find here, such as access to a PDF viewer, access to a Firefox web browser built on in. There's also access to a basic word processing for word editing, things like that it can all be done. So for the majority of tasks, you won't be missing anything compared to regular Windows. Because the hard drive space really is so large though, you can always just install it as a second partition and just have a second OS to try out and then switch back and forth if you're not satisfied either. If you think about it, many of our phones that we have in our pockets now have upwards of 6 to 8 gigs of RAM, which is pretty ridiculous, but it shows how far we've come in terms of computing technology. So it's workable on here, but it's not anything lightning fast. It can be improved. You can do things like, you know, view back a YouTube video now without having it stutter, but it's still not going to be able to play it back smoothly in full 1080p. So that's the Nokia Booklet 3G Revisited. I've always wanted one of these when they first came out, but never got the chance to get my hands on one. But until recently, when I was able to find a used unit, and surprisingly, I found that the battery performance was still quite good here in 2018. Chromebooks now are still more plasticky than the Nokia booklet, just because this one is unibody in terms of its build, but in terms of thickness, they have become much more comparable to what Nokia is offering here. So it really just shows you how far ahead Nokia were back in 2009 when they introduced this beautiful looking design. In 2018, would I recommend picking one of these up if you can find one? Probably not, because it's more of a collectible grade uh, device where sometimes the pricing will be affordable, sometimes it'll be really expensive. And for the internals, which is again one gig of RAM, it's just very underpowered. Even back when it first came out, it was considered as kind of slow, very netbook ish specs. Uh, although you can improve the performance ever so slightly, it's kind of hard to upgrade things like RAM on this particular model. So I would generally say a regular Chromebook that you can get in 2018 would probably be the better experience to go with. Ultimately, this gives us an image of what can be and perhaps what might be possible in the future if Nokia ever decide to get into computing again and release a netbook or a laptop. I think that I would definitely be one of the people interested in checking it out. Granted, if they keep the beautiful design as well as update the specs for a 2018 standards. So you can check out more details about this in the links down below. But for now, that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. That's been a throwback look at the Nokia netbook, the Nokia Booklet 3G.